being more. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Like, let me slouch a little bit more. Let me slouch a little bit more. That is the worst Mae West impersonation I've ever done. All right, basic series intro, take one. Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today and over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be doing a basics of costume rendering series. Y'all asked for it and I'm giving it to you. We're gonna be working together on a rendering step-by-step -step in each video. Hopefully that means I can be a little bit more thorough in each step of the process. Today we're doing underpainting and skin tone and if you don't know what that means exactly, stick around for the rest of the video, I'll explain it all. Tyler explains it all. All right, so come along with me while we paint up this rendering. Oh, before we get started though, I'd like to address a couple of questions that I've gotten. Uh, one is um, the type of paper I'm using. It's just simply 11 and a half by 17 cardstock. Um, I buy this from Amazon, super, super cheap. It comes in a pack of like 50 sheets. And the great thing about this is it can go through a printer or a photocopier. So if you've already drawn your rendering or your, your, your basic sketch, you can actually print that out in a very light ink and um, use that as your background. I do that for every single rendering. It saves a lot of time. And that way, if I mess up, I can just go and print the base drawing again. So that's great. And then also the markers I use, um, I have been fortunate to be gifted a lot of Prismacolors from a lot of people that graduated from costume design school and didn't like marker. So Prismacolor markers, a full set, super expensive, um, but buy the colors you need and over time you'll, you'll collect them. So with that, let's get into this rendering. All right. So what I went ahead and did was print out my costume design onto an 11 by 17 piece of cardstock. They're vaguely Elizabethan and we'll get into that in a later video. So what I went ahead and did was I swatched out all of my skin tones and all of my underpainting tones that I wanted to add into this thing. You can see this here. What I did was I swatched all the skin tone markers I had and all of the underpainting markers I had. Next, I went ahead and tried out all of the underpainting skin tones that I wanted that would cause the low lights, the rosiness, etc., etc., under each skin tone, and then put the skin tone over top of that to make sure they would work together. So now I'm going to move forward into the actual rendering. I decided for this rendering demo to do some skin tones the costume design career often overlooks. I think it's 2020 and we have no excuses to be imagining traditional characters as Caucasian only anymore, as it subtly negates the talent of performers of color and their inclusion in the theater world. I found some great success rendering many different skin tones throughout my career, and I'd love to share these techniques to help other designers better reflect a more diverse cast and future. The women I'll be rendering from left to right are of Asian descent, Black, and Latinx. As you can see, I've already laid in a lot of the rosy undertones in ballet pink. I'm adding in Deco Peach onto our Latinx character, and I'm using that to blend in with the ballet pink to give her a little bit more of a sun-kissed complexion. I love Deco Peach for a deeper skin tone because it's a little bit electric, so it really allows it to shine through under a darker skin tone marker. I'm adding this to the fingertips, the pulse points, everywhere that would get a little rosy if you were to, um, I don't know, go on a jog. As you see here, I'm adding Sky Blue Light, one of my other favorite undertone markers. I'm adding this to our Asian woman, and I'm using this in some of the deepest, darkest points because she'll be so fair-skinned uh, when I lay in the final skin tone. I'm attempting to not narrate this like a sleepy Bob Ross, but I may not be successful here. Such is life, I guess. Adding the sky blue light everywhere that there would be a shadow. And this is the really fun part. This is where you get to truly sculpt the face. I'm putting this in the hollows of the cheek, the concave of the eyes, and the temples. That's a really important part to put it there. Um, pretty much anywhere that you're going to cast a shadow. What I often find helpful, and I didn't do it on this rendering, is I take a little sticky note and I draw an arrow on it, and I place that bad boy up wherever I determine the sun or the lighting instrument is coming from. That helps me maintain across the board all of my shadows and all of my highlights. All right, so now I'm moving into some fun. For our woman in the middle, because her skin tone is going to be so much darker than the other two, I'm bringing in the rosy undertone through the color pink Prismacolor marker. It's a really, really strong, almost hot pink. And I need that because the skin tone that I'm putting over it is a very dark chestnut brown. This will allow it to show through and really read as a warmer point. I'm putting it on the decolletage 
for the time period, and I'm putting it on the cheeks, and I'm putting it on the shoulder points. Also, I'm now going back in with my ballet pink and just blending and diffusing those edges out, but I want to maintain the hotness of that hot pink for now. This is going to look a little crazy for a little while. Don't worry, it'll all come together once I get that skin tone on top of it. I'm coming in with a little bit more of that deco peach and just blending those colors all together. That's going to give me that heat and that hotness of those rosy points under that skin tone. Again, these undertones need to be strong because when you're applying the marker on top of them, it's going to subtly diffuse and fade all of this underpainting, which is what we want, but we do want these colors to ring true under there. I don't know if you caught it, but I also came in with a marker called Coldenrod and used that in the hollows of the cheek just as a bit of contour. I don't know why this works, but it does. I'm sure someone with a little bit more color theory background than I do could tell you, but Goldenrod seems to really sing true under a darker skin tone. All right, back over to our hero on the right. And what I'm doing with her is I'm going in and adding those blue undertones like I talked about with our woman on the left. So just adding them in kind of in the same places as our woman on the left. I'm bringing back in a little bit more of that ballet pink because I can't stop myself. I'm actually adding this around kind of the outline of her arms and what I do when I'm doing skin tones is I like to kind of erase my pencil marks by really sculpting the shadows around the character. This just kind of helps it prevent from being so illustration-y and a little bit more realistic. We'll see how well it works out, but that's at least what I try to do. Oh, here's the goldenrod marker I was talking about earlier. I'm just adding it into the shadows, kind of as a transition shade in her eyelids, everything like that, just to kind of really give me that nice transition. Again, don't know why this color works. I just truly do love using it for this skin tone in particular. Okay, now for the shading on this woman in particular. Again, as I said, these colors need to be a lot hotter and darker and deeper on this character in specific. So for the shadows on this character, I'm using Violet Mist, which is actually kind of a dark purple color. I mean, it's still light, but it's a darker of the lighter purples, if that all makes sense to you. To transition these darker purple shades, I'm using a very vibrant blue. Same principle as I've been talking about, it needs to be hotter and brighter than any other color to just ring through under here. I actually truly love what she looks like without a skin tone on top. I think this could actually be a really fun way to render skin on a piece of white paper for a different project. Now to blend that hot blue out with a little bit of that sky blue light. I told you I was going to use that for everything. I love this color so much and specifically I love this brush tip pen. I'm adding in a little bit of that violet mist that I was using on our other ladies um, to our lady on the left. I know she has a lighter skin tone but I really want deep dark shadows on this woman. I want everything to have a little bit of a witchy vibe um, and if you've noticed I've left a couple of voids or at least there are some pencil marks to indicate some crazy makeup that we'll get into next week. You'll see what I mean don't worry about it but I'm leaving that kind of bare there while I'm doing the underpainting. It sounds so mysterious, it feels so mysterious to leave things out for you guys, but I promise it'll all make sense if you just binge watch this whole series. And with those finishing touches, I think the underpainting is done. Looks absolutely bonkers, doesn't it? And kind of gorgeous. I'm really into it. But now it's time to move on to the skin tones like we talked about. 
So what happens next is we let this just dry for a little while. I'm going to give you a little closer look. Ooh, look at that. And then I'm going to move forward by using the markers that I've picked out for their skin tones. I'm going to apply these really quickly and really loosely over the underpainting in one single layer so that we don't mess the underpainting up too much. And by that I mean we don't want to reactivate the marker under the other marker by working wet on wet. All right, so our character on the left, I'm using a color called Eggshell. It's a very strange name for such a beautiful color. And I'm just going to do this, like I said, very quickly over top. I'm not trying to disturb the color underneath it. I'm also leaving a few patches of white paper showing through just to give us a little sense of highlight. There, you can see those mysterious little voids that I was talking about for the makeup. She's going to have a stripe of makeup across her face, and I want to leave that bare and not paint it in the skin tone because I want to use a little bit of marker to go across that so that I can get a really vibrant color. I'm basing this on a costume design that I've done in the past where we kind of brought in some witchy Celtic vibes to a costume design. Over top of eggshell, because eggshell reads a little yellow undertone, I'm coming back in with buff or chamois, which I love. I don't even think I'm pronouncing that right. But I'm coming in with a little bit of buff, just to kind of give it a rosier hint and tint. On our woman on the right, I started with the color Cinnamon Toast, which I've used a lot for skin tones in the past. It doesn't feel deep enough and different enough from our woman on the left, so I'm actually going to go over it in sand. Um, and unfortunately that marker's a little dry. You'll see, I had a couple problems with it, uh, you know. But here we are with Cinnamon Toast and we're just going over the face. I'm not doing a crazy block um, makeup for her, so I'm actually just able to just completely cover the face in this. And this is a great brush tip marker and this is wonderful for doing skin tones. Again, anytime you're doing skin tone and undertone, those would be the markers that I would recommend buying with the brush tip. It just is so much more flexible and I feel like you have more control over the color placement itself. All right, here's that dried out old marker sand that I was talking about. The color is beautiful. I definitely need to buy another one. I actually have three of this marker and all of them are dried out, so I picked the one that was least dried out. I've heard tales that you can dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it'll help rejuvenate the marker. I've honestly been a little too scared to try it. Maybe I'll try it, I don't know. I may just shell out the six bucks for another marker. Anyway. It's going to be fine because ultimately in the next video you'll see how I even out the brushy strokes of it with a little bit of colored pencil. For our lady in the middle, I'm using a marker I absolutely adore for deeper skin tones called Sienna Brown. It has a great, warm, rich undertone and I love, love, love using this. And you'll see I actually go in with the back end of that marker, the fine tip, to kind of get in there and just really like solidify that color even deeper. I'm also popping in there with a little bit of cocoa bean which is a great beautiful dark brown marker. I'm just popping that into the shadows. Here's a great final look of everything a little bit up close. You see what I mean about the streakiness of sand? We're gonna fix that next time. Don't worry about it. Thanks for watching today and if you'd like to see the rest of this series and more costume related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Oh, and go ahead through that back catalog to see more conversations with industry professionals as well as some speed renderings that I've done in the past. Alright, I'll see y'all back here next week uh, for the next step of the process which will be hair and makeup and skin details. So, put your markers away. Next week we're going to be working in watercolor pencil pretty much only. I may have lied. We probably will have some Prismacolor markers, but for the most part, next week is going to be the details and that's where we get into a watercolor pencil. And if you've never seen one, I'll show you. So, I'll see you next week. Bye!